Hello everyone, my name is Taylor Goodhue and I will be discussing leadership and gender. I will first discuss a few of the most influential women who have paved the way for young women in leadership today. Even though the evolution of women in the workforce has increased, there are still some current issues and barriers women currently face in the workplace and throughout higher level leadership positions. I will then discuss gender and leadership theories and the breaking glass ceiling concept in leadership roles among women. Women have been involved in leadership roles since the mid 1700s and some examples include Cleopatra and Maria Theresa. Although there have been hundreds of women throughout history who have made an impact on women's rights, these six women have broken the social norms and continue to influence women today. In 1740, Maria Theresa inherited the rule of a country that was poorly governed and desperately poor. Although she was uneducated on how to rule, Maria Theresa eventually chose her own advisors and deftly delegated responsibilities. Maria Theresa turned around the economy, revitalized the military, and instituted mandatory public education for both girls and boys in the country. Queen Victoria inherited, inherited the throne at the age of 18 and was the longest ruling monarch in British history until her granddaughter surpassed her record in 2015. Coco Chanel is widely known as a fashion icon. However, Coco Chanel was remarkable in her forward thinking and indifference to society expectations. Chanel chose to wear trousers and men's clothing. She released women from corsets and other restrictive clothing and focused on casual comfort instead. Coco Chanel revolutionized women and challenged society on a social level by choosing not to marry or have any children while publicly embracing intimate relationships with men on her own terms. Eleanor Roosevelt began her influential career as a teenager who was active in social work. Eleanor Roosevelt was an early advocate of civil rights after becoming First Lady of the United States. She was independent and outspoken on the rights of women and African Americans long before the civil rights movement. After her husband's death, she continued working as a delegate to the United Nation, where she advocated for people while taking a non-partisan stance on most of the issues. Indira Gandhi is a great example of women who gained power in a time and place where women were generally treated badly. Gandhi was formed for the leadership position by her father, but became the first and only female Prime Minister of India. Gandhi was also a strong advocate for women's rights and helped to advance India in an international stage. Oprah Winfrey is another great example of self-determination, hard work, and a positive attitude can lead to a successful career. Oprah has the longest running daytime talk show on television in which is broadcasted in 145 countries around the world. Oprah began her life in poverty and then went on to become the single wealthiest African American. In turn, Oprah has dedicated herself to help others get out of poverty also. Oprah went on to establish an academy for girls <clears throat> and invested over $40 million of her own money into this project. In short term, 
women are much less likely than men to be in leadership positions. The reason is not because of the lack of unqualified women. On average, women earn the majority of university degrees at every level of education, and more women are in the workplace today than ever before. So why is there a gender gap? The U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission reports that 30,000 cases of sex discrimination in the last five years were selected or decided in favor of the person who filed the charge. However, blatant sex discrimination isn't the only barrier. Hostile work environments, negative stereotypes about women in leadership, and bias also keeps women out of the top spots in leadership. A role congruity theory of prejudice toward women leaders proposes that perceived incongruity between the female gender role and leadership roles leads to two forms of prejudice. The first one includes perceiving women less favorable than men as potential occupants of leadership roles and evaluating behavior that fulfills the positions of a leader role less favorable when it is enacted by a woman. Another potential for prejudice exists when social individuals hold a stereotype about a social group that is incorrect with the attributes that are thought to be required for success in certain categories of social rules. In general, prejudice towards female leaders begins with incorrect perceptions between the characteristics of women and the requirements of leader roles. These stereotypes include men occupying the role of the breadwinner and women occupying the homemaker role and lower status roles. The key proposition of the social role theory is that the majority of the beliefs about men and women pertain to communal and agenic attributes. Communal characteristics, which are pointed strongly towards women, describe a concern of the welfare of other people. For example, being affectionate, helpful, kind, sympathetic, gentle, and sensitive. In addition, agenic characteristics are more pointed strongly towards men, describing an assertive, controlling, and confident personality. For example, aggressiveness, ambitious, dominant, forceful, independent, self-sufficient, and prone to act as a leader are all characteristics of being agenic. Staying, staying current with issues and trends among female leadership allows us to celebrate women's roles in our society and to also identify areas for improvement. Currently in the United States, women represent 47% of the workplace and in 40% of families in the United States, women are the primary providers of the home. Women also earn more bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and doctoral degrees in the United States than men. It is statistically proven that women-owned businesses have outpaced the overall increase in new businesses by 1.5 times, meaning that women-owned businesses are more likely to produce more revenue and extract more customers than other businesses. However, statistics related to major leadership roles consistently show inequality. Women constitute 4% of the five highest 
earning officers in 500 companies and 0.4% of the CEO positions. Today, 13% of senators, 14% of congressional representatives, and 10% of state governors and 2% of military officers are women. The United States Federal Glass Ceiling Commission defines the glass ceiling as the unseen yet unbreachable barrier that keeps minorities and women from rising to the top of the corporate ladder regardless of their qualifications or achievements. The glass ceiling inequality represents four concepts. A gender or racial difference that is not explained by other job relevant characteristics of the employee. A gender or racial difference that is greater at higher levels of an outcome than lower levels of an outcome a gender or racial inequality in the chances of advancement into higher levels, not merely the proportions of each gender or race currently at those higher levels, a gender or racial inequality that increases over the course of the career. The first person to, to use the glass ceiling term was Marilyn Loden, during a 1978 speech. The glass ceiling was defined as discriminatory promotion patterns where the written promotional policy is non-discriminatory, but in practice denies the promotion of qualified females. In addition to the glass ceiling, a similar phenomenon called the glass escalator is occurring. This concept can be defined as the occurrence of men joining women dominant fields such as nursing and teaching. And within these job fields, men are rising right past women and going straight to the top, similar to if they were on an escalator and women were taking the stairs. The small win strategy suggests that corporations can make small changes or small wins that break away the barriers that hold women back and eventually dismiss discrimination. The small win strategy includes four steps. Organizations recognize that they have a problem. Senior managers diagnose the problem and give it a name. Naming the problem opens the possibility of change, and then small wins turn into systematic change. In conclusion, even though women earn the majority of university degrees, it is still less likely for a woman to participate in a leadership role among corporations. Negative stereotypes about women and where they are traditionally presumed to reside in the workplace. The breaking glass ceiling concept discusses the unseen barrier that keeps women from rising to success within a corporation. And by using the small wins theory, a corporation can break these barriers to end female discrimination and change the way their corporation promotes successful and deserving women. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on gender and leadership theories. Have a great week.